So far in this module, we've dealt with the idea that objects belong to collections. And we've seen that we can look at each object in a collection using a for each loop. Each object in a collection can also be a container for other collections. For example, each workbook object in a workbooks collection contains a worksheets collection. Each worksheet object in that collection can contain collections of chart objects and list objects, and of course range objects. In this part of the lesson, we're going to look at how to use a for each loop to process these nested collections. Let's get started by opening up the file that I've downloaded and extracted, and choose to enable any content if we're asked to do so. This workbook contains eight worksheets, each of which contains multiple tables and chart objects and cells. We'd like to loop over the rows in the first table of each sheet to calculate the points scored by each team. And we'll do this by calling a function that we've already written. We'll use that function to populate the points column in each table. Let's open the Visual Basic Editor and find module number one, which contains a function called total points. We'll create a new subroutine called calculate points. So let's create a new sub called calculate points. The main loop in this example is going to process the collection of worksheet objects. So let's declare a variable called ws as worksheet, and then st set up a for each loop, which processes the worksheets collection for each ws in this workbook dot worksheets. We can close that loop by saying next ws, and that's the basic outline of the structure for the loop. In each worksheet, we want to loop over the range of cells from cell A2 to A5. We know that this is a fixed list because there were only four teams in each group of the competition. So let's make life easy for ourselves. Let's declare a second variable, dim r as range. And then within the first loop, we can begin another for each loop. Let's say for each r in ws dot range A2 to A5. So because we know it's a fixed range, we don't need to worry about finding the end of the list. We can then complete this loop by saying next R. Notice that we precede the reference to the range of cells with a reference to the worksheet variable. Without this, the code would refer to range A2 to A5 on whichever worksheet was active when we run the code, rather than the one that's referenced by the worksheet variable. To complete this example, we want to call the total points function, passing in the value of wins and draws to calculate the total points, and then returning the answer to the cell that's one, two, three, four columns to the right of the cell that we're looping over. So let's do that by adding a new line of code to the for each loop, which processes the collection of range objects. We can say r.offset. 0, 0,4 dot value equals. Then I can call my total points function and I can pass into that a reference to the appropriate cells which contain the wins and draws. I'll break this across multiple lines of code to make it slightly easier to read and I'll name my parameters as well so that an, an end user would know what's going on if they look at the code later. So wins is going to be equal to r dot offset 0, 0,1 dot value and then the draws, or ties if you're watching in the States, the draws will be equal to r.offset 0,2.value. I just need to close the parentheses then to complete the call to the total points function, and that's the complete example. We can now simply run this code to test the results. And once we've done that, if we switch back into the Excel workbook, we should find that each sheet has its points column populated by our code. And you can flick between each of the sheets just to prove that that's the case.